Hello, my name is Seth. My name is Fabian. Uh, today we're going to be talking about worldviews and how they are shaped throughout our life. Yep, so be ready to take notes. Correct. Very important. Very, very important. Right. Very good. So first off, to understand what worldviews are, you need to understand the three different dimensions of a worldview. And we're going to go one by one. So the first dimension is cognitive, which determines what is true and false in the world. Number two is affective. It determines your perspective on what is beautiful, what is ugly, what is right and wrong. And number three is evaluative, making decisions that lead to actions. So next we have the functions of a worldview. Um, number one is to lead a person or group of people into a particular way of life, right? So worldviews essentially determine beliefs, values, behavior, speech, and the final outcome of life, okay? Number two is provide answers to our ultimate questions, right? So any questions that we may have about, you know, our spiritual life, um, that's, you know, the function of a worldview. Number three is to give us emotional security, right? Super, super important because as human beings, we are very emotional, especially um, when we're, you know, growing up. Uh, number four is to help integrate our culture. And lastly, number five is to monitor culture change. Um, so something to take note of is when you are analyzing worldviews or even different worldviews, you need to understand the difference between what is a sufficient argument or what is kind of just an opinion out there, a, a personal kind of um belief on, or take on things so an opinion what what justifies an opinion is something that has no evidence zero evidence it's just a personal conviction or maybe a personal uh perspective on on, on a take of things whereas an argument it's nothing but straight facts straight facts that goes against another fact maybe and that's how you can have um two differing views um going like combating against each other right? uh so yeah moving on to fundamental questions um so number one origins where do i come from All right this is an essential question when it comes to um your worldview where do i come from number two morality what is right what is wrong you know who decides that um number three purpose what is my place in this world? And number four, destiny, where am I headed after I die? Um, these are, you know, essential questions that we ask all throughout life. Having a worldview definitely helps with these questions, especially number four, which is destiny, where am I headed after I die? Having a solid worldview and foundation um, will give you a, a clear path to, you know, where you're going to go and the answer to that question. So what are some factors that shape worldviews well we have relationships experiences which honestly is probably the greatest factor that shapes our worldview education the power and the social dynamic of society so basically you know the uh, culture from society and prejudice um right now I, I, i'm gonna take kind of a second we're both gonna take a second on going giving some examples that maybe you guys can take note of on, in your life and reflect maybe how did certain relationships maybe how did certain experiences shape my worldview for me my family history kind of goes back I'm technically a fourth generation Adventist um my great-grandma my grandpa on my dad's side um he was a pastor for uh the South Asian Pacific Division. He worked his way up to becoming the VP of the division. So when I was growing up and he would love to visit my brother and I, make good connections, but his priority, I would say, maybe as the pastor in him, wanted to make sure that my brother and I and his entire family got into heaven. So that was basically my first 
face um, of understanding my worldview of Adventism, my perception of Christianity, and go as far to say my perception of what God could do in someone's life. Um, I remember that when I was growing up, my grandpa and grandma made stories or made my brother and I stand up on the bed right before we sleep and tell stories and what my grandpa would say, give me a sermon or preach to me about Daniel or preach to me about David and Goliath. And we would go over these stories, kind of always swinging my fist as I was preaching on a podium, my bed podium. And essentially, little seeds were being planted growing up. My parents also, my mom was a big factor in what shaped my worldview, praying before I went to sleep, praying before I ate meals, praying before leaving to go to uh, school, making sure we went to Sabbath or went to church on Sabbath, making sure that we respected Friday nights. Things like that gave me perspective um, and people in my life um, definitely allowed me to understand uh, what Adventism was, what Christianity was. Um, and honestly, what went hand in hand with that was the education aspect for me. I have always been in the Adventist pipeline, the school system, starting from all the way I, from pre-K up to now in college. Um, I remember, you know, for the longest time, maybe I took a little bit of it for granted, thinking, oh, we're always going to be in this Adventist bubble. But I mean, little did I know this would be the greatest community I could find uh, solid footing in and understanding like people like my roommate Seth here, um, able to meet like minded individuals. Um, that's that's a huge plus and it kind of forms your character forms your worldview um in those senses but yeah, anyways beautifully said um similarly uh my my worldview was definitely affected by education that was a huge thing relationships i think those are the main ones um a little bit differently though my dad was actually a principal not a pastor um still he he was a principal of Adventist schools so Growing up, I, I was raised Adventist, obviously, and, and uh, I attended Adventist schools my whole life, pretty much through pre-K all the way up until junior high, I would say. Um, so having having that background, having my dad as a principal my whole life definitely helped uh, shape my my worldview. I think a lot of people have, have different experiences. Well, obviously they do. Um, I would say another thing that really helped shape my worldview was going to, I didn't, I didn't go to an Adventist uh high school I went to a non-denominational Christian high school so it was a little bit different but it was really really cool to actually see so many people's different worldviews that are not Adventist so I, I saw like Baptist worldviews um you know a bunch of different yeah I'm blanking right now but a bunch of different other worldviews that people had not only Adventist so it was cool to be able to branch out and be able to experience the world a little bit differently other worldviews um those are just a few things. I think that's that's really cool that every person has their own worldview, but I think it's it's really important to have a worldview and be able to base that on, you know, education, relationships, prejudice, experiences, um, power and social dynamic of society. Like I said, everybody has a different worldview. But yeah. So, I mean, I, I would just go far to say, I mean, take some time to reflect on some of these factors. I mean, uh, another example that comes to mind is I remember just going through a situation. I don't remember what, but I remember it was stressful. But I was like, God, if you're real, turn on this light post or send a bird just flying by like the flash super fast. And definitely had those, those thoughts. you know, you, you, you challenge God and maybe things don't come. You know, these are experiences that for me, at least never happened. But then I was able to kind of understand, well, you know, I learned a little bit more about if things came too easy in life and where how, how weak would my faith be if I always needed a sign, you know, things like that. Um, those, there's definitely lots of experiences in the world that you could have that would shape your worldview or prejudice. Maybe, you know, someone was 
super disgusting to you and Mm -hmm. now you view the world as this evil toxic society um and and so forth so take some time to reflect on your life maybe see what the greatest factors are in your life and see how that all kind of correlates um and so forth and anyways moving on um yeah i'll go ahead what is truth right so truth is a prepositional description of that which describes reality as it actually is Mm -hmm. right says it right there number two truth has two main components what are those components correspondence explanation descriptions that come via questions that correspond with, with reality um and coherence right so makes sense to a point of no contradiction uh i think these these two these two point points are you know extremely important when it comes to truth and knowing your personal truth in your life you know and how that affects your worldview uh going forward you know after college um you know looking back at your past seeing what worldview how your worldview was affected by your experiences and then how you know truth plays into that um just to touch on and if you got uh if there's anything to put in your notes um i would write this highlight this write this this down please write this down please lies are the root of all evil okay that's gonna we're gonna quiz you on that and we're probably gonna test you on that all right um next slide this one as well is super important truth by definition is exclusive we're gonna we're gonna quiz right. you on this so you, you know you could think oh i have my truth is is this it? no there is one truth and that's the same truth for everyone else right you can't have a different truth right i i cannot say oh yeah i'm i'm a i'm a dude and then him his truth be like oh no you're a girl hey, whatever there you go. all right all right let's move on we'll, we'll cut that up yep. all right no we won't <laughs> yeah we will <laughs> all right there are three things that the bible uh called truth and that is the bible the law which is ten commandments and then jesus he was the truth um so if you were to take down these verses make sure that you see um uh, and read for yourself on what the bible itself which if we believe this is the book of truth these are three factual um statements that say what are the truth in this world and uh yeah that's that's about it right just wrapping things up i hope you guys learned something this was you know very interesting topic um but but yeah anything else to to add just make sure that you guys took your notes um the exam will be next week yep that's it thank you very much